Welcome back to Grumpy Old Men, Bob, and you're going to love our next guest because he did have bent legs, didn't he? <laughs> oh, well, he used to run very low to the ground. <laughs> he was very strongly built. Oh, magnificent. Socks down. Couldn't get him off his... Couldn't get his balance. You never put him off balance at all. Low centre of gravity. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Great to welcome Sergio Silvani from the Carlton Football Club. Serge, welcome to Grumpy Old Men. Did yeah, you have bent legs? A, pleased to be here. Still got them. Yeah. Still got them? <laughs> I reckon they were starting to stiff up, though, from the arthritis. I was, I was starting to straighten Even as a kid, did you, you know, did you have, you know, look like you've been riding a horse all, all of your life? Always pigeon-toed. Pigeon Why weren't you a soccer player? Always wrecked when I used to run. Why weren't you a soccer player? Tried out. I used to play in this, as a kid in the street with the beach ball. Yeah. We didn't have footballs in those days. You used yeah. to have the paper football. Yeah. So somebody had a beach A lot of ball. kids don't realise that, uh, even, I'm not quite certain whether Terry or Tony, I think, uh, well before their days, Bob, but I know when I was a kid growing up, you used to get the newspaper, That's wrap it right. up, put a lacquer band around They're it, you'd go out in the street and you'd be kicking, uh, taking one-handed marks. You'd get occasional good one which could torp. Torps, beautiful torps with uh, paper footies. But I used to go to the uh, Olympic Park. Mm. Juventus used to play soccer. I was about 14, 15 years of age on a Sunday. They used to get 20,000 to a game in those days of soccer. Mm. And just the administration just destroyed... Fortunately for VFL and the AFL football, mm. administrators have destroyed the game. They're still having squabbles now, aren't they? Mm. The Australian well, how did you get down to Carlton? Uh, well, lived in Carlton, Canning Street. Always followed Carlton. Fred Stafford used to ride past on his bike back from work. After the 47 grand final, we were waiting for him to drive, ride his bike past. Uh, some mates were playing with the thirds. I was still at school at Parade and wasn't supposed to try out with a with a third or whatever but anyway I went up there I said come up because you just get about 120 there on a Saturday morning I suppose you mm. remember 120 yeah. for thirds 120 for the reserves and about 40 for the seniors and I've turned up and they've taken the names and you got to think this is around about 54 or something like that and Australians couldn't even pronounce the name Spaghetti, let alone the right <laughs> Silvani. Like, you know, so you can your name in Sergio Silvani, like, you know, and the guy just, his eyes roll. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and anyway, they pick a couple of teams and they look at me and they say, the guy can't pronounce the name, can he? So he gets me to run, you run the boundary. And what he probably didn't ha help me was Parade had purple and green shorts, which probably fashionable now, but in those days you didn't play football, you had <laughs> white or black. So I wore a pair of khaki shorts up there to play football. So anyway, I run the boundary for the first two halves and they'd change players at quarter time, change at half time. And it wasn't until about halfway through the third quarter that the guy came up and said, oh, you better go on, and went on. And did pretty, pretty well. I cleaned up some kid who thought he could play at full forward. I thought he was full back. <laughs> Cleaned him and up physically or cleaned no, him up? No, no, he, he didn't get a sniff. All oh, right. <laughs> and anyway, they said, gee, you could play. And I said, could you turn up next week? I said, no, I've got to go back to school. I can't play. But the reason why I couldn't get on the ground, the guy couldn't pronounce my name. Sergio Silvani. <laughs> <laughs> we had to anglicise him a bit to help people out. Well, tell us about how you become uh, the famous Ruck Rover down at Carlton. Who first discovered you as, as, as being a Ruck Rover? Just by accident. I was emergency. I'd been playing half back, uh, centre half forward. This is in the reserves because I'd played two years of thirds. I had a bit of angst because I had to play YCW football. I'd told the guys there at YCW that I was going to play for them. I'd played the first year, Saturday and Sunday, which is shocking, like you shouldn't do it. I'd tell kids now, don't even try and play two games of football at the weekend. I used to play Saturday thirds, Sunday YCW. First year, all right. Second year come up, they left me off the reserves. I used to have a reserve supplementary list. So, well, well play thirds. And uh, most of your kids, I said, oh, you know, you're going to play with us this year. But I was a bit right on the borderline. I, I, your birthday's on the 28th of June, and you had to be uh, underage by the 1st of June or something like that. But if you were a delinquent kid, the priests were able to get a couple of kids in under as a delinquent. <laughs> to help their moral character. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, they've whacked me, they've got me in under this rule. Under the delinquent. delinquent. <laughs> under the, <laughs> needed God, and so I, once I teed up to play YCW, then the uh, Carlton Football Club said, hey, we want you to play reserves football. I said, no, I can't. I've lined up with the uh, YCW. So there was a bit of an angst. They had me before the match, and we were going to be, I said, sorry, 
that's it. So I played a second year of thirds, which was terrific because by the time I was got up in the 1958, started off with the seniors, I was a pretty mature guy. Like I'd been playing for two years, thirds, learning the game, been working on the concrete for another two years. So there was no gymnasium in those days, so I was probably the strongest guy that was walking around the field anyway. Like you know, so once I started away, I went. And, uh, was what did you do as a concreter? What were you? The man that carried the concrete in the... Shovel. Shovel. shovel push the wheelbarrow. Yeah. Mix it up and throw it in the wheelbarrow and wheeled it over and properly... Build up the legs. Yeah. <laughs> then he got the bent legs. Well, I'm just saying, if you've got a plank either side with the... <laughs> and there was no, never any danger I was going to do an anterior crucial or anything like that. <laughs> Well, it was a famous ruck roving uh, combination, wasn't it? There was John Nichols, Sergio Silvani, Adrian Gallagher. That's right. It was and pretty good. And we'd all do our own thing. You know, even though we teamed together, like I used to be the backstop, Gag would be the forward player, and Nick used to control the air. So you think back to what happens now. Some of these guys running around getting their 30 possessions. That counted as about five in our day, because in those days you didn't receive any handballs. Like the only kick you got is with you went in and got it. And no one kicked the ball backwards to you. No, no backwards. <laughs> so who it was only you get on and then got the ball if you wanted to kick? Who would have been the best combination that that you three come up against? Oh, he made it very hard because Bull Richardson got amongst it and he started handballing out, and there was no way known you could sort of yeah. block yeah. it off. Mm. What about your long ladder, fair little? Uh, ruck, oh, braver combination. John used right? to have good duels with yeah, uh, with Polly. Oh, okay. With Polly, yeah. but I think we'd normally win, wouldn't we? Well, well I'm just going to say, which, is Nick is a, a myth, or is he the toughest fella that ever played, Big Nick? He was just an honest football. He's like a Voss now. He's, yeah. like, he's got had presence. Yeah, mm. that's right. And, and he was so, vicious, so but... beautifully built. Well, he could. He was quick. Yeah, that's what right. What people don't realise, he was quick over the ground. Yeah. They just they, they sort of think of him in the 70 to 73 when he was captain and coach. And, yeah. Or, you know, when he was captain and coach and he had all needles in his ankles that keep going and he couldn't run, but he was a... He was... He now... Had, he, he could lift up off the ground, couldn't he? he could oh, he up. could jump. Yeah, that's he, right. He, he was magnificent. Yeah. Well, he had legs the size of a... Oh, huge stump, legs. Yeah. But he'd yeah. be... Modern game today, he'd be like a locket at full forward. And yeah. No one would be able to stop him. Mm. What, what about your reputation yourself? Do you feel like people uh, underestimate your abilities as a player? Because, like, even the intro came, you know, he, he got bent legs. Like, you know, you, you were seen as being fairly slow and... Yeah. Well, I, I, could, I couldn't play. I, used to <laughs> play. I, used to play. I couldn't. But I couldn't kick. I couldn't run. Gee, that's amazing. And, and if you see some old toes of me go from Mark, so I used, in one way I used to kick me legs up. You accepted it, but you knew you had your strength just the ball. I just work on minimising the opposition, and that was my role. Yeah. Captain, yeah. captain, one year? One year. What happened? Uh, Brass come over, so I couldn't say to Brass, yeah. I'd step aside. <laughs> <laughs> so did, when Brass came, he didn't say to you, listen, uh, you want to stay on as, uh, as captain and I'll just play, you know, I'll be the coach? <laughs> Talk about Ron Brass. No, he had yeah, Nick in mind. Like, Nick, Nick had had some problems and anyway, so... Nick went up to become the vice captain. Brass stepped in, and it was sensational. Like you know, he made the Carlton Football Club because we were going nowhere. We we're going nowhere. He just set the pattern, set the culture. We had David Dench on, and David Dench said, "You know, Brass he started right back at the grassroots. Did he do the thing? Did he do that at Carlton? Exactly with us. He exactly. Just, all he wanted was competitors. Yeah. He didn't care whether you could kick it a mile or whatever. Just guys who could go in, get the ball, and compete." and limit their opposition, and that's what we worked mm -hmm. on. Like, we used to win so many close games. It took us a while to get the momentum going, but then when he got to about three years he'd been in there, then he started to pluck the skill players, the like the Jezelenko, yeah. the Croswells, to match up with the competitive mm -hmm. instincts that we already had there. Mm. Serge, uh, Carlton went through a, a very strange patch there at one stage, of course, after Brassie left. And then Ian Stewart came and coached the club, but only coached a handful of games before illness forced him. Uh, what four, four games? Four. Four games before he uh, pretty traumatic. He moved experience on. Cause... And they had to find a coach, and they actually said, "You're the man, Serge. Coach the Carlton Football Club." It was a brilliant sequence of events. Like we've, we've gone, and a few of us have stood against the committee there. And there was me, George Harris, myself, Kevin Hall, and John Manuzzo. We unseated for the uh, committee that were up. <laughs> 
we got in, and in Stewart had been appointed the coach for the 78 season, and accepted that. And, and there was a, must have been a power broker at work in the background, and you can only have to look at the late Laurie Kirk, as George walked in, here we are, there's four of us walk in, George is present. How can four guys walk into a club and one of those groups is the president when there's about seven other voting members, so it's, it's all beautifully set up. A couple of us, Kevin or myself, were on the match committee with Wes Lofts, and everything's going reasonably over the summer, like we're organising things. Anyway, we've gone out for our first training session, and we were working on getting Carlton people, like Huey Mitchell was one of the coaches at Carlton at that time, reserves, and I think it was Thoroughgood of Melbourne, and there was somebody else, for, uh, the thirds coach, and they weren't sort of ex-Carlton players or ex-Carlton people. So that was our first thing, so we got Quirky for the uh, thirds job, Brian Quirk, and we got Adrian Gallagher for the reserves job, and Ian Stewart had the senior job. And we got across the oval for the Royal Park, and we strutted across me, Hawley, Wes, and they're running around, and Stewie come up and says, you've got to cut your losses. And we thought, oh, you know, some plays, doesn't like me, it's got to get rid of. Gags. Yeah, what's up with gags? It's a reserves case. Hasn't turned up for the co first coaching session. Got to get rid of him. <laughs> so <laughs> next day, so second the retraction, coach. retraction. He was off in Perth for the Plastic Eleven playing cricket, and he, I think he was still in. He couldn't get away. He was, <laughs> had a good partnership going, so he missed the first training session, and he missed every other training session after that. Because <laughs> next day he had a retraction in a paper. Oh, because of business pressure, I've got to resign. So anyway, get into the season. We play our. So here I am, we can't find anybody. We interviewed who? Kevin Rose, Hassan Ann, Neil Roberts. And none of them wanted the reserves job. I think they sort of thought about it now. So everybody just points at me. I hadn't been near a football <laughs> field in seven years. Because like I, I was doing around the grounds for the ABC and whatever. And uh, hadn't been at the footy grounds since 71 after I retired. Uh, yeah. Oh well, I'll fill in. Four weeks into the season, we'd lost our first three games, won our fourth. I'm out on the track on the Thursday night after our win. Stewie said, look, I've got to go off the track. I just want to go and see the dock. Just keep him going for another 15, 20 minutes and bring him in. Right. Anyway, I'm trying to trot out after about 15 minutes. He said, I'll finish up, take him in. Stewie's not coming back out. So I've gone in there. The next time I saw Stewie was about three years later. <laughs> 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 Up in service, you know, we had some problems and away he went. So, so you took over as coach? Yeah, so I've, they said, you're the coach. I said, hey, come on, hang on. I've only coached in four reserve games in my career. I think I've had <laughs> one, two and lost two. Yeah. So here I am, I've got a coach. And we're really well organised. If you know Wes, we're well organised. No clipboard, no board, <laughs> no nothing. So who's he on? I don't know if you're yelling at somebody. Who's he on? So anyway, three games, three losses. And they said, oh, you know, we're going to do to keep it going. So anyway, George Harris had the brilliant idea. Internally, Jezza. Jezza was appointed and it was magnificent. Played Collingwood at Collingwood the first, his first game. He brought Purse back from the reserves. Purse had been sulking in the reserves, doing nothing. <laughs> We'd had Dave Mackay as our Rutman, because Stewie, he, he was brilliant. Stewie, the way he set up, he said, hey, so what, could we had McClure and Walls playing as half forwards. He says, no good, too slow. You've got to get rid of one. Eventually, Wallsy. Was shut it off to Fitzroy. Mm. Best movie he talks about. We're great, amazing. He talks about best movie in his life. Best thing that ever happened to him because of the career that's gone on, mm. coaching yeah. and everything. Been magnificent. And uh, getting back, so Walls is gone, which meant we only had the one tour, which was McClure. Shears has come in, brought Person as the Ruckman, great mate of his, and tremendous Ruckman Purse, competing. Dodging, bring the ball down, the, and uh, Dave Mackay become the centre half back, and Jezza drove him with fear. 
the mm. training, just fear. He was a very hard trainer, Basic, Jesse, wasn't he? and just fear. They would yeah. train for, if they lost two-hour training session, no worries. Mm. <laughs> That's all he worked on. Just, mm. and the half forwards, don't worry about your kicking goal, you just hold the ball up there because Jezza played down half-back flank. That was sensation. The way it took off from there. So how many positions did you actually hold within the club? I mean, you've you've <laughs> played, you've been senior coach, you've been reserve coach. I've been a runner. I was a runner in 1970. I only played six games in 1970 before the uh, 70 Green. grand final. So, oh. so Brass had me at his runner. And he said, I want you to start playing. Well, let's have a look at this. This is the 1970 grand final. This is the famous one, of course, when you come back... I won't get a kick. ...after half time, you won't, even, you won't get a kick. There you are. The famous number one going to ground. Lost it. Can you tell us... Uh, <laughs> Desperate. After it. There's Jezza. Peter Second. Reekins, the Collingwood player there. Yeah. Can you tell us, Serge, you know, everybody knows it's been written up. All he said was, get out, run and handball. Now, was that true? Can you get... Word for word, you're in there. What did he say, Brass? Did he mention handball at all? He mentioned handball. I won't tell okay. you the first part. But he did mention <laughs> about how you were going at the moment. <laughs> about how we were going, but he didn't mention handball. But we'd, he'd initiated handball at Carlton. We'd started when he came there in '65. He, he laid down the blueprint. And if you have a look, you've got to kick then. It hasn't gone anywhere. And it wasn't the handball that you have here now. He was using the handball to set somebody up to kick the ball to get over the line. Cause yeah over the next marking line, because in those days they just used to kick the packs. So you'd get the ball and just kick to the next the pack, and they'd get the ball kick to the next pack, and he used it as a forward. Handball was always forward, not backwards, sideways, and around the corner like you see now. You look for the free kick then, but they said no play on, so looks like, went. it looks well, like... They used to pay free kicks in those days. Serge <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> looked like he used to just uh, go for the old wobbly torpedo punt, flat punt. Well, you talk about, like, and that's probably near, getting near the end of the game. Dehydration, like now. Like, in our day, we never used to have water. No. We weren't allowed to have water. No. That was a sign that's of weakness. That's why you had to change. Sign like, of weakness. Uh, in one game in 69, three-quarter time against you guys, I couldn't walk. I dehydrated. I knew what I was supposed to do. My legs wouldn't move. Mm. And it happened again, sadly, it happened again that 1970 when I fell over and I couldn't get up. <laughs> I said, God. And we couldn't work out why. And we were just talking about it. And Adrian Gallagher was the same. He said, I used to think there was something wrong because I said, hey, gags, it's dehydration. Mm. And the South Australians were ahead of us because they used to do it in 1970. They started mm. the dehydration. The only thing is, you used to drink the water over there and it was that ball water. You used to get crook yeah. as a dog. So, how many premierships were you involved in at the club? I mean, obviously the couple that you played in, but all up, how many premierships? No, look, I brought the medallions in if you want to have a look. Let's have a look at the medallions. Premiership yeah, medallions. There's two as a player, three as a selector, in three and six years, and they thought I wasn't up to it, so they thought they to change. Just show everybody what they are. Is that, the, I don't know, boys, these, you can get that. These are what the league gave. That's it. To the yeah. players. Yeah. And the everyone administrators yeah. and everyone connected. It's There's the, the uh, teams on the back. That's got the teams the on the back, yeah. yep. And what's it say? Victorian Football League, Carlton Premiers, 1987. And you've got how many? Seven of them. Seven of them. <laughs> Had a bad run. <laughs> <laughs> the other two were selected. Uh, what the other two for? One, a good one is assistant coach and one is a good luck charm in the box. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby, Bobby, what, a, what about this? This bloke's been involved in football for about 40 years. Yes. I've got his son in law, was my board man. As soon as they had a kid, he said, no more. He's not allowed to be involved anymore. It's not bad, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Family's first. <laughs> well, speaking of family, uh, just recently, of course, there's been an upheaval at the, the Carlton Football Club. Uh, and your son, of course, was, is now a board member and also working with Channel 10 in the media. But he was Stephen Silvani, one of the greats of the Carlton Football Club. John Elliott came out recently and said he betrayed the Carlton Football Club. How did Sergio Silvani take that news? Oh, maybe very grumpy. Like, in the same parcel of comments, he mentioned this board is not up to it. So I think you'd look at a board, you'd like a few businessmen amongst the board, wouldn't you? Mm. Three of them made the BRW 200. Three, you know what that is? Yes. That's pretty good. I'm not Three. In it. I wish I was in it, but yeah, go on. Then he said, there's no football knowledge there. Like, a couple of the guys that come on a, well, Steve two premierships, Mackay four, there is as many, and Collins won one too, mm. so the football knowledge is still there. Then he mentioned betrayal, 
<laughs> uh, for you as the president, and I'd, I suppose the football director would be involved in contract negotiations, you would think <laughs> you were the guy who's compromised the players. Yeah. Mm. Don't pay the players and use betrayal, as I suppose, as your uh, hope that they won't say anything. Mm. So, the, the so when the league comes, look, and there was nothing happening. So it hurt He's the it uh, Silvani family? You were hurt huh? by that? You were very hurt by the, the comment betrayal? Oh, I think so. <laughs> I would very much think so. Mm. Betrayal there. And everything had got nice and hunky-dory and quiet, and he's brought it up a few weeks ago. Like, uh, betrayal. And uh, so what does a guy do? He's compromise. The league come along. There's no payment, Your Worship. The league comes along. They ask, so he tells lies, and then if he wants payment, who does he go for redress? When they say, hey, you've said you've got no other contract. Like, you know, just a, it was all working on a sort of thing where the guy would just clam up, and virtually it's a scam. Mm. Okay, but I, th I think we need to take a break, but yep. a, a question on notice. I just want to ask a bit, with Steve coming through as a youngster, and then you get the idea that maybe he might play league football. As a parent, and this is a question on notice, how did you feel? Did you feel like you want to get away from it, or the total support and saying, yeah, well, he's going to play footy mm. and emulate what the father did also? Well, That's we'll get the there. answer after the break. Uh, something for you to sit there on that beautiful couch, because we'll make a comment about the beautiful <laughs> couch when we come back to But we'll take a break, and we'll come back with the great Sergio Silvani. We can even pronounce his name on Grumpy Old Men. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Grumpy Old Men. Well, Tony, you asked uh, Serge, of course, yep. about Stephen, and uh, he's got the grandson as, as well. He's got three grandsons, and Stephen Silvani, one of the greats. So let's have a look at uh, Stephen, and the family, of course, had this wonderful association with the Carlton Football Club, and you must be very, very proud when you see your record of, of Stephen as a player, Serge. Oh, he's done very well. He's where done very that, well. Where's all that marking come from? You never got off the ground. Chess mark. They yeah. Yeah, chess marks. Chess mark. Oh, that's a chess mark. And that, who's this? Chess mark. Yeah. Oh. You learned that early. <laughs> how, did, how did you feel, Serge, when he looked like he was going to play for Carlton? Like, a lot oh, of pride, but did, were you cool. nervous? What's the name of this grandson? That's Jack. That's Jack, is it? He's not happy. Jack's not too happy with the kick. <laughs> no, he's a bit of a sook like his mum. <laughs> <laughs> were you nervous? Early on I was, yeah. but you sort of make suggestions how you can prepare him keep your eyes open, peripherals, and go about it in a sensible way. Like, Did he ever tell you to shut up? He doesn't want advice? You don't Nicely. tell him what to know. <laughs> like, I never ever told him what to, you make no. suggestions. No, yeah. You always tell people, don't, by telling them something, They'll you restrict that. them. Yeah. You, must you just suggest something so they can try it and flank it and do what they like. But you just give them those parameters to work in and that's how you help them. You yeah. must have been the proudest father when he was named the fullback in the team of the century. It's fantastic. That was embarrassing. Embarrassing, <laughs> was that? It really was embarrassing, like, you know, because there's been some great fullbacks Ooh. around and to be still playing and to be nominated, don't you prefer... Because you get better when you... As you get older. As you're out of the game, then you right. start becoming... So then they can say, oh, he was a great fullback. Well, while you're playing, gee, like, everybody sort of wait to knock you down with the supporters of the opposition team. Like, and he had to go through that for another about seven years. Well, we think he's fantastic yeah, he as is. the fullback of the century. The same as you, Serge. Thanks for joining us on Grumpy Old Men, and we look forward to catching up with all the fans next week, and, of course, also thanks to David Dench. We'll catch you next week on Grumpy Old Men. <laughs>